Hello everybody, welcome to Poly Games. I'm your host Joseph, and today is our review slash giveaway of Dark Souls 3. It is finally here. I have finally beaten the game, that's why I look like such a wreck. <laughs> so, before we get into it, uh, just let you guys know, remind you, this is a, also a giveaway video. So, um, I'll talk about that at the end of the video after our review. So, with all that out of the way... Let's talk about Dark Souls 3. Joseph, cut to the gameplay. Yes, sir. So, guys, you may know that Bloodborne is the game that got me into this series. Um, Dark Souls 3 is my first in the Dark Souls series. Uh, Bloodborne is my game of the year of last year. I loved Bloodborne, so I wanted to see if this game matches up. So let's get right into it. Combat. Where these games differ right off the bat is the combat. Where Bloodborne's all about counterattacking to regain health, parrying, dodging. It's all about blocking, parrying, dodging. Counterattacks get you nothing. They don't regain your health. They're silly if you do that. The other thing that differs between the two is uh, potions. You get Estus Flasks in Dark Souls, which you upgrade via getting charges on the Estus and uh, Undead Bone Fragments that you get to get more health out of an Estus Charge, as to where in Bloodborne, you just get a shit ton of Blood Potions. And that's what makes Dark Souls really unique, is the fact that you only start off with about four Estus uh, Flasks, and you really have to manage them throughout the game. You get more as you go on, but... That's because the enemies get more difficult. And that's the one thing about this game that I love is you got to think a little bit more. Yeah, Dark Souls is a little bit harder than Bloodborne in the sense of, you know, if you get hit, there's no way of regaining that health. And that's a great thing about this game. Uh, the weapon variety. There are a ton and ton of weapon variety in this game. You got whips. You got swords. You got, you know, both one-handed and two-handed. You got um, great swords, clubs. Uh, axes, bows, crossbows, magic, you know, fire, man, like you, there's anything you want to do, you can do in this game. And it's great in a way how Dark Souls still grounds you in reality that the, any boss is going to be maybe slightly easier as another class, but nonetheless, the game is going to kick your ass. And that's a great thing is that there's no way around it. You're going to get your ass kicked. And the one great thing about the game is, too, you know, no matter, like, if you're a knight and you want to change and you want to respect, you can do that. You could be a mage midway through the game if you're not liking how a knight's treating you. Uh, let's talk about enemies. Enemies in this game are really unique. They all have a different look. They all do something different depending on what area you're in. And you rarely ever come across the same uh enemy twice unless you're fighting a fucking dog because dogs are apparently fucking everywhere in this game uh you never really fight the same enemy twice if you walk out of that area that's you say goodbye to those enemies you're gonna meet new ones and you have to learn again and that's all what this game is about it's about teaching you it's about you know overcoming that that you know brick wall you hit and once you overcome it once you break through that wall you feel like you've achieved something like, once you beat... My, my hardest thing was, in the beginning, was fighting the knights. And those knights were fucking assholes. But once I learned them, once I learned their pattern, they became a breeze. And I felt like this sense of achievement when I fucking beat them for the first time it was amazing. And that's what the great thing about, about this game is. It's about the achievement when you overcome an obstacle. But there's a downside. There is a major downside. I feel like some of the bosses are way too fucking easy in this game. I know, I know, I'm going to get hate right off the bat, but I feel like the first one-third or maybe even half of the bosses I beat in the first try. I didn't know I know the first three bosses, I three or four bosses I beat in the first try. And then, like, some other bosses, yeah, it took me a little bit of time, like maybe three tries, but I found that the only one boss that was a major dick was the pontiff... Um, then fuck that guy he's an asshole but i found like yeah the bosses were like, kind of a joke in this game i don't know maybe it was just me maybe it was just i'm so fucking good bro but that's what i found the other thing i didn't really like uh and i'm not gonna take points off for the bosses because i feel like that is fucking completely uh, f completely just my skill level i guess i don't want to just say that you know the game's too easy uh, 7 out of 10. You know, I don't want to come off like that. 
No points come off. And that's just what I found. Maybe I'm just really good in this fucking game. Uh, but the other thing is that is they reuse animations a lot in this game. And not like they, like all the undead die the same way in one level that they do in the other. I mean, they take assets from Bloodborne. Like when the Axe Pike guys die, they do the same reaching death animation that they do in the Bloodborne in the second level. Um... You know, the guys with the rams die the same way the guys with the rams in Bloodborne do. There's a, uh, beasts that fight the same way werewolves do in Bloodborne. Like, I couldn't help but see... Even some of the guys that charge at you with the axes do the same charging animation that the guys in uh, Farron Woods do. So I couldn't help but see that and go, uh, couldn't you at least take from the same game in the series and not like a spiritual successor. That was my only, like my only real hard, like I, I see what you did there and you're not, you're not clever. You're not getting past me game. Uh, but yeah, so those are the two things. Boss fights though. They're all very unique and there are some that make me feel like, uh, like, um, metal gear solid, how you have to kind of break the game in order to kind of beat them. You know, you got to put the controller in player two type of deal. Um, definitely some bosses that feel like that. So with that being said, let's move on to, uh, let's move on to graphics. All right. So now let's talk about level design and graphics. So let's get graphics out of the way real fast. The game's beautiful. It's stunning. This game has to be one of the most beautiful games I have played this year. Bar none. There you go. I've said it. This game is just fucking stunning. Now let's talk about level design. Level design in this game is some of the best in gaming. From Software always does a great job at level design. Somehow the maps are always interconnected. You find these little shortcuts, these little, you know, things of where you open the door and you're at the previous bonfire that you already lit and you found a shortcut and you're like oh thank god i could avoid the horde of enemies that i just got to let me rest at this bonfire and let me know now kick the boss's ass you know those shortcuts are amazing when you find them you feel like you did achieve a little bit and also there's points in the game where you feel like you've cheated the game like i'm gonna give you a little spoiler uh in the first level uh, you get a bow and arrow and you get arrows and then you see this huge dragon that is just causing havoc on everything and you don't think you could kill him but if you put 50, 50 or 70 arrows into that dragon he'll actually fly away and now you'll have all these dead you know undead and they've all dropped a little something and you get a little reward for what you thought was cheating cheating the game but the game wanted you to do that, right? It felt like an exploit, but the game wanted you to do that. It just didn't tell you. And so it rewarded you thinking out of the box. Again, the game is about rewarding, you know, the player when you did something clever. I love that about this game. There's several more instances, but I want to get too far. I don't want to spoil anything. Again, the game just, the, the level design is just, so great in this game it's they just outdid themselves again so um the one other thing i want to talk about too when i talk about aesthetics and looks is the set pieces are amazing when you look out and you see like that almost painted like you know mountains far far away from you right and you're like wow i feel like i am in the fucking like mountains right or you look and you're like it's all swampy and discussing you're like oh god i'm in a fucking swamp the set pieces are like that of star wars where it's 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 painted on in the back it looks though so real and it gives you the sense that you're there so let's talk about the online component to this game uh we talked about level design we talked about the action this is where the community comes in and the Dark Souls community, to me, is fucking awesome. Uh, because when you're walking around the world, you actually see, like, blood on the floor and a blood stain on the floor. And when you click on it, it'll actually show you how that guy died. It won't show you what he was fighting, but it'll show you how he died. It was just really awesome. It's a great warning when you're playing the game, you know, and you're going in an area you're not sure about. The other thing, too, is people leave um, notes on the floor. And when you, you know, it'll be like monstrosity ahead and you know that there is a big fucking thing over there 
maybe I should turn back and get more Estus flasks. Or there'll be like illusionary wall and then you hit the wall and it's actually a magic wall. You can actually, there's a room in there you can explore. Sometimes they do fuck with you. Uh, some people love to put illusionary wall ahead and you end up just, hit, you know, fucking hitting all of the walls and nothing fucking <laughs> happens. And you're like, fuck, I just wasted five minutes. Um, but also you'll know if something's a lie or something's not real by a many, how many appraisals it gets. If it's low appraisals, you know that, you know, maybe I shouldn't trust this guy. Maybe he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Um, also if you are embered, uh, meaning you take this, um, item and it gives you more health and stamina and all that jazz. It'll also make it so that you can get invaded by enemies. But it also means you can also summon your friends to help you fight bosses, fight enemies as well. So it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Because it does help you, it gives you benefits if you do that. But it also makes you vulnerable. People can invade your world and kill you. Uh, but the great thing about it is that they don't take your souls. You just have to run back and go and grab your souls and you have them. So I, that was the one thing I was afraid of in Dark Souls is if they took all my souls. So... With that being said, let's talk about the sounds and the story in this game. The soundtrack is amazing. It's possibly one of the best soundtracks in video games since Skyrim. There, I said it. You know, the menu music is beautiful. The levels music is beautiful. The ambiance and noise is creepy and sets the tone rather well in each level. Each enemy sounds unique. They sound different. They sound gruesome. They sound dangerous. The bosses sound great. The music in the boss fights are so fucking epic. It, it's just like amazing. It's like those fucking army of one commercials with the marine fighting the fucking demon on that plateau. It's fucking bad. <laughs> it's fucking badass, man. You feel like, you know, you've overcome or you're, you're fighting something huge and daunting. And when you overcome them, you're like, oh shit, everything dies down. Everything gets peaceful again. You hear the... Um, and you're like, oh, fucking thank you. Thank you, creepy THX noise. Thank you so much. That Now I know I've beaten him. Um, the story, uh, I can't really judge it too much since this is my first entry and it's the last entry. Uh, but there's a lot to discover and to find in this game. From Software is all about story if you want it. They're not forcing it down your neck. And how it's told is rather unique and not a lot of games do. And when they try to, cough, cough, destiny, they fail so hard. So hard. And Dark Souls seems to be one of the only games that can do this and do it well. So with all that being said, what do I have to feel about this game? I love it. I prefer Bloodborne a little bit more. If you're getting into the series, I would actually say start maybe with Bloodborne to get you into this game. With all that being said, um, I rate things from 0 to 10. 10 being a masterpiece. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. But sometimes games can be a Citizen Kane and show us what game games are really all about. And then Zero, how did this fucking pile of shit get made? So between Zero and 10, I'm going to go with a 9. It's a solid fucking amazing game. There are some problems though. Um, there are some, you know, the game kind of lags on a little bit too long for me. I beat the game in 40 hours, but there's a lot of grinding in this game. I couldn't really get into it because of that. Um, also, the frame rate drops, they're apparent in this game. I actually forgot to talk about both of those things. Uh, there's frame rate drops in this game, you guys. <laughs> Take my word for it. Um, but if you enter like a swamp or you enter somewhere with fog, you get hit with this frame rate and it is god awful it's like from 30 frames a second it hits straight to nine if you have too many enemies on screen and you do an epic slash and you know cut them all again frame rate drops they fixed it quite a bit but now because of that fix i can't get online for some reason i don't know it's a little weird but that's what I've noticed in this game. So it's a solid nine. It's an amazing game. It's a great game. It is possibly my game of the year this year. Um, and when I say nine, I'm ballparking, guys. I mean, if you think this game is a 10, go go give it a 10. If you think this game deserved an eight, if I was too good, give it a fucking eight. I'm ballparking here. I never want you know games to be written in stone of this is what it is. 
So, with all that being said, I love the game. Let's talk about the giveaway that I'm doing. Guys, there's rules to this giveaway. A, you have to be subscribed. All right? This is only for subscribers, no one else. You have to share it. And then you have to comment. Uh, and I want an awesome comment, you guys. I don't want, like, give me free game pucks. I don't want any of that. At least spell fucking correctly. Um, I want what you feel about the Dark Souls series. What do you feel about this being the last Dark Souls? Are you a Bloodborne player and you're curious? Let me know. Talk anything Bloodborne or Dark Souls related and you get a chance to win. Like I said, you have to be subscribed in order to even be a part of this. You have to share it and you have to comment. With all that being said, everybody, have a great day. I don't have a catchphrase. Enjoy yourselves.